Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props, and in today's video, we are going to be taking this incredible Red Hood helmet from Villainous Prop Shops through all the steps that you need to do to get it so it is super smooth and ready for paint. It takes a little bit of time, but it is totally worth it. Let's get started. Okay, so anytime you either buy a helmet or you print a helmet yourself and you're using a traditional FDM printing, you know, spools of filament, it is going to have layer lines. It's just the nature of the beast. It's how the technology works. Now, this helmet from Villainous Prop Shop is crazy smooth. It is so dialed in. The layer lines are just so minimal. It is gonna take very little to get this thing ready for print but we still have to do the work to make it look really good. Now, how do we do that? First thing we're gonna to need to do is we are going to need to sand it. So these are some of the supplies you're going to need to do that. So right off the bat, you wanna have a mask. Uh, you are sanding plastic into very, very fine bits, into a dust. You don't wanna be breathing it in, so do everything with a mask on. Very, very important. So. What types of sandpaper do you need? Now, when I do any of my helmets, I usually will start out at a rougher sandpaper and then work my way up. It's how you do most sanding. And I usually start at a 120. I find the 120 does a really good job of knocking down the, the layer lines and really starting to rough that up so we can smooth it as we go. Now, of course, you're just gonna then go up in the numbers. Of course, the higher the number you get, the uh, finer the sandpaper and the finer the finish. So then I'll go to a 220, then I bump it to a 320, go over the whole thing again. This is why this takes time, because you do the whole helmet or the whole prop in one grit, and then over and over again, the same thing. Then I will jump up to a 400, same thing, everything. And then after that, I will usually have to do some filling, uh, maybe tiny cracks or some layer lines that I couldn't get rid of. Again, all helmets are gonna have that. And for that, I will usually use this Bondo glazing putty. Uh, I find this to be a really good um, material to use. It fills really well. It sands really, really well. Uh, you can also use wood putty, believe it or not. I just like this stuff. I like how it's in a tube. It doesn't dry out because you've got a cap as long as you don't lose it. Put that back on and you're set. And then after I use the glazing putty, I'll of course have to sand that again. And I'll sand that with a 400. And then I'll sand that with a 600. Then I will wash the print in soap and water, let it dry. And then I will wet sand that with a 1200 or 2000 grit. Wash it, let it dry, and then it's ready for paint. So let's work through all those steps in this video so I can show you step by step how to go through the process. Okay, first things first, do not forget to put your mask on, and then we are gonna start sanding with a 120 grit sandpaper. Again, the coarser grit to really help knock those lines down. Now I've wrapped the sandpaper around a sponge. It helps me have a better hold of it because you're gonna be doing a lot of sanding. So if we take a look here, we can see that the layer lines, they're still there. Again, not a lot in these helmets, really cool, but we still need to knock some more down. And again, I'm still using the 120, and you can see the more you work that, the more you'll get rid of these layer lines so that you're not gonna have to do a lot more of the finer sanding later on. So you can see here, the layer lines are almost gone and you're gonna wanna do that across the whole helmet with that 120. And don't forget to get into the cracks and crevices. Again, this is why I like wrapping the sandpaper around a sponge. The sponge is soft and it really lets you get into all those little spaces to smooth that stuff out. Now, here we've done the entire helmet, and it's hard to really see much of a difference, but if you look, you can see most of those layer lines are really knocked down. Now we're gonna go with the 220. Again, as we move up, the sandpaper gets finer, and uh, it's still doing its job, and it's just making a smoother and smoother helmet. Don't forget, as you're sanding, because you can sort of forget about this, it gets away from you, to do all the little bits of cracks and crevices, because you don't want those to stand out. Now we jump up to a 320, again, a finer sandpaper, a finer finish on the helmet. And again, you're gonna do the entire thing. Of course, you're still wearing your mask. 
So even after all that sanding, there are still some layer lines. You can barely feel them with your nail, but they're there. So we're gonna use some fillable sandable primer for that. Key thing is wash the print before you use this primer. Now, I like to put it in a bath of hot water for a little while. This stuff is thick, that's why it's sandable and fillable. And this way it breaks it up and makes for a great mix. And it'll coat it really well. Now again, make sure you're not getting too close, stand off as the directions say, eight to 10 inches, so you're not getting any runs. And just give this a really generous couple coats, let it dry, maybe even get it another coat to fill in all those layer lines. Sandable fillable primer is magic. If you look at this thing, you can see here, almost no lines now in this helmet. It's gonna have a little bit of grit to it. You're gonna have to do some sanding after this, but those major lines are gone. Now, if you remember, we did have some uh, thicker grooves up on the top, and we're gonna take care of those with some glazing compound. But before that, we need to sand this sandable fillable primer so it is smooth before we go ahead and put on our glazing compound. And again, while you're doing it, don't forget, work in these cracks. We don't want them to fill up with the uh, primer and the things we're using. Now we're gonna go ahead and give this thing a wash. I washed the print multiple times during the process to get a lot of that grit off. So here we go, here are some of those thicker layer lines. And this is when we're gonna use our glazing spot putty. And I like to use a piece of foam because it really helps me get into the cracks and crevices when I'm working. And you're just gonna go ahead and, you know, you don't wanna sort of cake this stuff on, but you wanna put enough in there to fill those lines to make sure that when you sand this, you don't see them. And some people go overboard sometimes with this glazing compound. I am guilty of it myself. You really only want to use it when you're taking care of these really thick lines and some of the minor lines throughout the helmet. At the same time, you know, if you really want to get that smooth, smooth surface, you might go through the whole helmet like I'm going to do and find areas where you can still see some lines and take care of those. Because the last thing you want to do is get to the end and get ready to start putting paint on or put the paint on and you start seeing some layer lines. Now, are there going to be a few layer lines here and there? Yes. I mean, you know, we're going to do as best we can, but this is not going to be 100% perfect, but it is going to look pretty sharp. And don't be afraid to go ahead and get your fingers in there into all the little cracks and crevices to make sure it is taken care of. Here's an area I forget to do a lot of times, and it's the underside of the helmet. Go ahead and use your finger to fill in those little lines because that is something that I forget, and then you can see that in the helmet, and nothing's worse than forgetting an area like that. Now, once the glazing compound is dry, you're gonna go ahead and sand that. And this stuff makes a very, very fine dust. Make sure you're wearing a mask. If you can be doing it outside, even better. Now, once we've sanded it, I've given it another coat of the sandable fillable primer because you want to make sure you have that on there before you do your final paint. But as you can see, some of the details are getting gummed up with all this primer. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some of these rasps, some of these little tiny files. I got these uh, at Harbor Freight. You can get them on Amazon or whatnot. You can find links below. And I'm going to go through the crack there into the detail to get rid of that and sand it smooth. Again, super easy to do, and it's a really, really important thing to make it look finished. Now, last thing we're going to do, yes, more sanding, believe it or not, we are going to do what's called a wet sand. So this is where you wet the helmet and or the sandpaper or both, and you work it with a very, very fine sandpaper. This is a 600 grit, and you are just going over all the details, and this takes care of all the sanding lines. Then I'm going to go ahead and wet it again and wash it down, and this is a 1200 grit. So this final wet sand takes care of any sanding lines and makes this thing glass smooth. Now, the key thing here is you're gonna wanna wash the helmet to get all this grime off with soap and water and let it air dry. In this way, it will be totally ready for paint. Okay, so let's go over the steps that it took to get to this point with the helmet. So first off, we started with a raw print and I worked my way up grits of sandpaper from 120 to 400. Then we used a sandable filler primer, a thicker primer, to fill in some of those little lines that were still there. Then we sanded that with a 400 grit sandpaper to really smooth it out. Now there were still some lines and still some little gaps here and there, so we used a glazing compound to fill those gaps. 
We then sanded that, and then I washed the helmet thoroughly to get rid of all the dust that was there because of that, that glazing compound. Then I went ahead and gave it another coat of sandable filler primer and sanded that down, but this time I did a wet sand. So I used a 600 grit wet and then a 1500 grit wet, and that gets rid of all the different sanding lines that we've done over the course of our sanding and gives it this glass smooth look. And this is now ready to take paint. So in the next video, we will be applying paint to this, and I cannot wait because that candy apple red looks amazing on these Red Hood helmets. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot for watching, and take it easy.